Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here for Precalculus, and uh, I'm going to do my unit review. Um, this is a unit on polynomial e equations um, and polynomial expressions. So I'm just going to go through some problems that we looked at on our review worksheet for the test coming up. Um, so let's go ahead and go through this. So state whether each of these is a polynomial. And if it is, what's the degree? If not, state what type of expression it is. Now, A is a polynomial. So I'll go ahead and write this down. This is a polynomial. And this is a polynomial. If I multiply this in, I'm going to give x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus x. So this is a polynomial with a degree of 4. I get it that from the highest power. Okay, B is not a polynomial. This is actually a rational expression because it has a denominator with an x in it. C is not a polynomial. This is actually an exponential because it has an exponential. And D is also not a polynomial. This one's a little tricky one. If you remember, this one's actually a logistic. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at the next ones here. We're going to match each of these graphs with their function. Now, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the number of zeros that it has. One, two, three. This one only has two. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a little line here and see how many it crosses this line. One, two, three, four, five, it looks like. One, two, three, four. This one crosses four times. This one, if I drew a line this way too, it'll cross one, two, three, four. And this one, if I drew a line this way, one, two, three. And, and I'm going to tell you why I did that. Why I drew that line was because if I can get a line in there with the maximum number of, of uh, intersections of that line, that's going to tell me a about what the power the degree is going to be so this one's probably going to have a degree of four this one's going to probably have a degree of one uh two three four probably a degree of five this one's also probably going to have a degree of four and this one's probably going to have a degree of three so number five here which one has the highest degree we can easily see that's b which one has an absolute max? We can easily see that's d because it has a maximum value right there's no values above that um, now we have um, this one has a 5 as its degree, so that's going to be B. This one has a 3 that its degree, that's probably the D one that we just saw. And then these two have both degree of 4. Now which one's going to be which one? Well, C is pointing down. Pointing down means that the leading coefficient has to be negative. So that's C and A is number 1. Okay. Let's take a look at the end behavior now. And we, remember, we saw the end behavior from here too. So the end behavior we can figure out based on the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient and the degree. Leading coefficient and the degree. So this degree is odd. This leading coefficient is negative. This degree is even. This leading coefficient is positive. So even and positive is going to look like, um, like this. And uh, odd and negative is going to look like, like that. So I'm going to write it as the limit as x approaches negative infinity is going to be equal to positive infinity because it goes up. And the limit as x approaches positive infinity is also going to be positive infinity because it goes up. And over here for b, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is going to go up right here. And the limit as x approaches positive infinity is going to go down. Okay, and those are the end behaviors. All right, pretty simple so far. Sketch the graph. Okay, this is where it starts taking a little bit more time. So we want to sketch the graph. And I'm going to zoom in for this one here. Oops. So what I need to do to sketch this graph, and then I'm going to solve for the inequality using my sketched graph, is I have to look at um, I have to look at my zeros and my multiplicities, right? Okay. 
Oops. Okay, so I'm going to look at my zeros. My zeros here are x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. I did that by setting those equal to 0. So I'm going to have, it's going to cross at 1. It's going to cross at negative 3. I have a multiplicity here of 2, so it's going to bounce. But first thing I need to do is I need to know what the degree is. The degree of this is going to be x squared, x squared times x, which is x cubed. All right, so I'm going to, uh, this is going to end up being a, an x cubed with a positive coefficient. So that's going to look like this. It's going to go up there, down there. Then I have at my x equals negative 3, that's going to be a, um, a, an odd multiplicity. So I'm going to go through that, then down here, and then bounce off of that one because I had an even multiplicity. All right, and then I'm going to, it's going to be uh, negative here, right? So I want this part here, and I want this part here. Oh, not that part there. Well, let's, why don't we just do undo, undo. Okay, so I just really want the part down here. Okay, so answering this problem, my intervals for the negative is going to be anything that's less than negative 3. Okay, so the answer to this is like this. Now, we could also use a number line, right? negative 3, positive 1, and um, determine what these are, and then use it that way, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Number 5, now number 5, number 5 is tricky to graph. So um, we're going to do this using algebra, but I'm going to quickly show you how this is going to end up looking if we graphed it, okay? We find the zeros from using the top, so we get x equals 2 thirds and x equals negative 1. Excuse me, this top one in the middle here is not going to have a zero, so I'm not going to worry about it. And the bottom is going to give me a vertical asymptote of x equals 3. So I actually graphed this, it's going to look something like this, positive 2 thirds negative 1. And what do I have as a multiplicity? Well, um, over here, okay, over here, um, if I put a like a, a 4 in, then I'm going to have 4 is going to give me a positive here, positive, positive, over positive. So it's a positive. So this is going to actually look like this. Now, if I did a number line, let's go and do a number line here. I have 3, 2 thirds, negative 1. So I already tried a 4 and I got positive. So let me try um, 1 here. If I plug in a 1, I'm going to get a, 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 neg a positive, a positive, and another positive, and a negative on the bottom. So that's going to give me a negative. So that means it's down here and it's going to approach that like that. The multiplicity of that x equals, I'm sorry, the um, x equals 3, I'm sorry, blah, 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 the 2 thirds here, the multiplicity of this is odd. So I'm going to go through that, back down here somewhere like that. And then the multiplicity of that is also through that. So I'm going to go like that somehow. All right. I don't know what's going to happen over there really, but I know it's going to look like that. So this is going to end up being positive and negative, and I wanted to answer the question, when is it greater than, greater than 0? So that's going to be between negative 1 and 2 thirds, and then again, 3 to infinity from this interval here and this interval right here. There's my answer for that. Okay. Okay, hopefully you saw that. Here, I'll move it over here because sometimes my face is in the way. My family tells me that all the time. My face is in the way. Okay, let's um, let's take a look at this one. Oh, that. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say it didn't show up all the way. Okay, solve for this one if we know that x minus x equals negative three is a root. Okay, so if we know that x equals negative three is a root, what we're gonna do is come on thickness. 
um, is we're going to use synthetic division. Okay, negative three, two, I don't know why that was happening, guys. Uh, 2, negative 1, negative 16, 15, and 0. Don't forget there's a another, you know, plus 0 there. Okay, negative 3 is going to give me negative 6. That's going to give me negative 7. That's going to give me positive 21. That's going to give me 5. That's going to give me negative 15. That's going to give me 0, which is 0. And my... And my um, my remainder is zero. So I'm gonna have two x cubed minus seven x squared plus five x plus zero. Notice I can factor out an x. And then I can factor this further. Two x, um, let's go with minus five and x minus one. And then x equals 0, x equals 5 halves, and x equals 1. And I already know that x equals negative 3. So i got to put that one in there too. And those are my answers. All right. Okay. Now if I want to graph it, I could graph it too because I think it did say on the directions to sketch the graph of it. Um, and I actually, I didn't solve this problem, so I better, I better solve it because... These are just, um, these right here are just the zeros. So we actually need to find, this was asking for when it's less than or equal to zero. So let me go ahead and um, plot these zeros. There's that one, negative three, and five halves, which is 2.5 right there. What's the multiplicity, or sorry, what's the degree? The degree is four, so it's gonna go up, up like this. And the multiplicity of all of these is one, so they're gonna, it's gonna go actually go through each of them. So through, 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 and all the way up like that. So it's gonna look something like that. I don't, actually don't know where the max and mins are, but I know it's gonna look like that. So what is my answer for this problem? Again, I'm looking less than or equal to, right? Less than or equal to, that's gonna be down here and down here. So my intervals are going to be from negative 3 to 0. And again, from 1 to 5 halves. And I'm using brackets because it was less than or equal to. Okay, let's go to number 7. Um, determine, oh, I'm almost, I only have two minutes left, guys, so I'm going to try to do this fast. Determine x, if x minus 1 is a factor. So the way we do that is we use synthetic division. So we're going to um, do 0, not 0, sorry, guys, 1 for the x cubed. This is x cubed plus 0x plus squared minus 2x plus 1. So 0, negative 2, 1. Put 1 there. 1 is going to give me 1. 1 is going to give me negative 1. Uh, it's going to give me negative 1 and 0. Since we got 0 for the remainder, we say, yes, it is a factor. That's all we got to do. Okay, last one. Write the polynomial uh, function. So the polynomial function, if I know that the x-intercept is x equals negative 1, then I know that the factor is going to be x plus 1 with a multiplicity of 3, so the power of that is 3. If the, factor is, if the answer is x equals 3, then it, my factor is going to be x minus 3 with a multiplicity of 1. If my root is x equals negative 2, so I'm going to have x plus 2, and my power is 2. Okay, and that is my polynomial function. If I wanted to, I could multiply this whole guy out, but I don't want to, so that's it, guys. That is the um, review for um, pre-calculus for Unit 4. Okay, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.